Hello, everybody. Today, we're here to talk about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, 44th time here on the channel. Yep, part seven, Steel Ball Run. Yep. Um, I'm Corbin, here with Jaden. And of course, last week, we had the third episode come out. And this week, guess what? Guess what? Oh, what? We got the fourth. We got the fourth. Okay. We got the fourth. Awesome. Um, this episode, we will be covering chapters, or not chapters, volume seven of eight of the part seven Steel Ball Run manga. And um, chapters 31 to 36, only six chapters, but dense as hell chapters. These oh my chapters gosh. chapters are nearly 60 pages each, I think. Yeah, and it's they're big. So yeah. I'd say we want to get started. But first off, what happened last time, Jaden? I'm glad you asked because I kept notes on that. So last time, Diego had finally caught the eyes for himself. And we're, everybody's turning into a dino. Johnny's turning into a dino. Gyro is. Diego already is one. And it's a race for the corpse parts. We find out that that's the real motivation behind this race. Yep. We got to find these parts. And that's pretty much what happened last time. And on with 31. All right. So we start off with 31 and we have Diego uh, has the eyes and the stand thing that's protecting it. What'd you say it looked like last time? Um, Reggie Steel. Reggie Steel. So Reggie Steel tells Diego the clue to the next corpse parts. And it's Turbo. Turbo, yes. And you actually, if you look on the eyeball, it says Turbo, which is pretty yeah. cool. Gyro at this point has become completely disabled and he has turned it completely yeah, into a he, dinosaur. Yeah, he is a dinosaur at this point. Like, there is no reversing it. Um, and then out of nowhere, we find out that there's a man named Ferdinand who is the real user behind this. Dr. Ferdinand. He is the... He has to stay in scary monsters. Yep. And pretty much he can turn... He can turn people into dinosaurs and he turned Diego into a dinosaur but he gave Diego the power to make more dinosaurs. Yeah. Right, and so as we'll see later, because Diego went through the devil's palm with this ability, he eventually develops it, and that's why Dio for us in the series will have the scary monsters yep. stand. While Ferdinand, I hate to break it to you, but Hank, he's dead here in about 60 pages. Yes, yes. And so Ferdinand reveals accidentally that they're protecting a 1900 year old corpse, very specific considering this story takes place in the 1890s. Yep, so that would be around the year zero. Uh, hey, that would be BC, not AD, right? Very close. Before yeah. Christ. Yes, yes. And so they talk about how the um, the corpse brings true power and respectability. And so getting it is like the ultimate end all be all. And remember, I mean, this corpse is protecting Johnny here. His arm part yeah. is protecting him from being turned into a dinosaur. And, and yeah. so Johnny, as you all know, is paralyzed. He can't move his legs. And so he's on the ground. He comes up with a pretty genius idea. He intentionally takes out the arm to grow himself a tail to bounce up with the tail of the dinosaur. But I think we're missing one thing. For some reason, Ferdinand has this really weird thing where he likes to worship the earth, mm. right? And like Johnny shoots out a few tusks at him yeah, yeah. and he's just like, ah, oh, what are you doing this? That's bad, yeah. right? And it's just like, okay, does that really play a part in this fight? besides the character trait for him loving the earth no nah, but I, I sort of get it because dinosaurs came from the earth to skeletons mm. it's just very random um i also did really like this part with johnny um taking out the corpse part yeah. to get the dinosaur power to then yeah jo use jojo it. villains in general have very weird eccentric personalities for no reason other than them yeah and this is a very weird eccentric one yeah um and they're able to actually get gyro the eye uh, one of them, I'm pretty sure Johnny's able to get one from Dio. Yeah, and yeah, because Dio steals both eyes, and Johnny goes on the attack mm -hmm. and grabs one of the. Or he doesn't grab an eye; he sort of just shifts it away. Yeah. Or he sent he knocks both of them out of Dio's hands, and they sort of roll in the sand. Yeah, yeah. Right, and we see that one rolls towards Gyro, and we get the money shot where it rolls into his own eye. Which yeah, is very. Strange. Well, no, the thing is that um, Ferdinand's doing all this, and um, what's his face? Johnny's knocked out both these eyes, right? And all of a sudden, this steel ball comes right at Ferdinand's yeah. face. I think this is what kills him, right? Uh, not yet. Not yet. But Gyro throws a steel ball, but like Gyro should be castated as he's not a dinosaur anymore. But he's got two eyes and just this um, turbo eye mm -hmm. lodged into his like side of his mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> this is really fucking cool. It, I am sorry. It's a cool shot. I've seen it animated before. I'll send it to you later, Corbin. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, to be honest, that may be the thumbnail of this episode. <laughs> <All right. clears 
<clears throat> just because it is such a cool shot of where Gyro is just like, yeah, look at that, bitches. Yeah, and so the ball, <laughs> as you see, actually starts developing an eye itself. Yes, it's, it's got an eye on it, which is yeah. very interesting. So it basically develops his ability to see through the ball, and he can also control it way better than he ever could. Like, he throws it upwards and it strikes down, which is something we haven't seen Yeah, yet. it sort of seems like he can sort of make it go by where he wants to look at it, yeah. with just... And so, while Ferdinand's being distracted, we do see in the background Johnny does put his arm back in. It's yes. kind of hard to see. You miss it easily. Yeah, yeah well... Yeah, I, I actually looked at this, and in one panel, Jaira's like, hey, go put in your arm. <laughs> and in the next panel, he's just normal Johnny again. Yep. And so, basically, Gyro is able to take the ball, and in a way, he can spin it and see vibrations and see things around him. And at this point, uh... Also, we forgot to mention, Ferdinand's missing. Nobody knows where he is. Yeah, he just disappears. Yeah, he just disappears. And Dio gets this other eye. Yeah. He steals the other eye, so that means that out of the corpse parts that we know, what do we know, three of them right now? Johnny has the arm, yeah. right? Both um, Dio and Gyro both have an eye, and then Valent funny Valentine, Valentine has, has the heart. Yep. Right? So it seems like nobody has more than one corpse part yet. Mm. So as he starts using this ability to see, he notices that one of the skeletons of the dinosaurs that you can see has a skeleton of a human inside of it. Yeah. And so Ferdinand went to go hide inside one of the dinosaurs. And Gyro at this point just throws his steel ball and just murks the dude. Yep. Uh, Johnny shoots the crap out of him. He falls out. And cougars get the rest. Yeah. And because once Ferdinand is done, everybody reverts back. So there's all yeah. the villagers that are back from being dinosaurs. Mm. And also a bunch of animals that just go and eat. Um, for yeah, Nan. Nan. At this point, we do realize that Dio has the other eye. They're like, oh crap. Yeah, and we see this interesting thing of how um, on Gyro, he has a cross under his eye, yeah. but Dio literally word has, has word Dio under That's his Dio, eye. Dio, yeah. Right? And it's very interesting that they make a note later, but each Dio and Gyro he got, each have gotten a half of the power from this eye. Mm. Just a really sort of cool thing, yeah. right? Gyro has his ability heightened, and I guess we don't really know yet. But I guess Dio has his ability heightened along with being yeah, keep scary monsters. Yep. Um, and so also we see that the the uh, eye does say turbo, which does come important later. Yeah, and it's got these weird symbols in it. And Gyro and Johnny realize that the terrorist is probably the country itself. That the the people sponsoring this race are the ones against them. You know, and. Gyro also says to Johnny that the offshoot mentioned about the corpse being 1,900 years old, that can't be right. Maybe it's 200. Yeah, he says it's like, it may be 1,900, but there's no way he said that. Yeah, it's too well preserved. Yeah. And then we get a 55 kilometer time skip as the race goes on and they're nearing the finish line of the, of the Yeah, stage. because the final um, shot of this chapter is Dio has just disappeared, mm. right? And we see that um, Sandman and Poco Loco are running by and Gyro and Johnny are like, ah, oh, shit, we gotta get a move on. Yeah. So, and then we go to 32. 32. So we see that in 32, Sandman and Dio are well, very much well, One thing real fast. Um, I really like the way the Scary Monsters happened okay. and the way it ended. You like the fight? I, I, I like the fight, the whole dinosaur sort of shifting mechanic. I like sort of see Dio in a way, being that I've not read any other part. I, don't, I may not get all of the references, but it's just really cool and interesting to see. And this Ferdinand sort of seemed to come out of nowhere. But I guess it was fine. And just like all of the turbo shit. Yeah. And then just at the end, it's like, all right, we've got to get back on our horses. We have to win. Mm -hmm. Really good and really cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any direct references to this. Diego and Dio from part three and part one are very different characters. Yeah. I mean, they're still very self-centered pricks. It, it, it's a name. But yeah. It's literally just a name. It's the name and the look. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we find that Sandman and Dio are very much rivals. They're, uh, they're back and forth a lot. And this is also where I say Dio has Dio on his face, which is just very... Yeah, it's uh, just written on his face. And as they're racing, Dio is actually able to read even more information with his ability, which yeah. might be the result of his eyeball. That it, might be what he can do with it. Exactly. And the thing is that while, like, uh, there were a bunch of racer sort of name dropped in this chapter, right? Yeah. And there's sort of, like, three ways to go around this <laughs> pit to, or this um, waterfall... Well, to get to yeah. this place you're going. So there's two ways. There's either A, the flat route that's a little bit longer, or the or, rocky route that's shorter. And um, we see, I sort of take this as like, Poco Loco and Sandman are always neck and neck, mm. right? Because Poco Loco with his luck, and Sandman with his sort of um, just feet, they go to rocky route, yeah. 
and then we all the art these other racers who aren't really too important they sort of go around the other side and then um what happens is Dio and Gyro just charge into the water. Goes to charge into water <laughs> because it's very much brought up that Dio and Gyro are in a competition of 40 eyes. Yeah. And so this water route is ridiculous and is very high resistance going through it, but it is the shortest route. And if they can get their horses through it, it will be a huge time save. Yeah. And there's this next interesting part of where Johnny goes in with Gyro. Mm. And he sort of says this weird stuff about, hey, Dio has a lot of drive in this race, yes. right? You don't. Yeah. And it's sort of this thing of like, hey, Gyro, if you want to win this race and get number one for Marco mm -hmm. and yourself, you've got to have more in a drive than, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to win this. Yeah, because Gyro or Johnny brings up a good point. Dio all his life had had to, had to fight for his success and he had to really work for it. And so he has that drive. Whereas Gyro mostly inherited all of his power and his abilities yeah. with his steel balls and whatnot. And that, that, that pisses Gyro off because he's like, oh, you think everything's been handed to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. He, and he's just like, well, fuck you, Johnny. Mm. As what Johnny does is he's like, right, well, I'm going to go take the safe route. If you want to win this, try to win it. I'm going to go to safe route and do my thing. Yeah. And Johnny tells Gyro that he needs to hunger for victory but not in the way that Dio does. Because Dio hungers for a stolen victory mm. in a way, right? Gyro should um, starve for a one victory, a, a pretty no, much. Yeah, hunger nobly, he says. Yeah. And so um, it, I can tell that at this point, both are learning from each other a lot more. Yeah, there's some really interesting shading in, mm. in this chapter, right? Just whenever Gyro and Johnny are talking, you're just shading on the faces. Yeah. It's very detailed and it's... I mean, I'm not really a fan of it artistically. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just really good shading, and no, nothing to say bad about here, 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 or Rocky. Yeah. But it's just sort of there, and it's like, really, that's just a hell of a lot of shading for this. Yeah, his, his art style does take a much more realistic approach than some anime, and it can be jarring to read, I guess. Well, it wasn't really jarring. It was just a very change up of what we've had so far. Yeah. But I do like that dynamic that Gyro or Johnny's teaching Gyro to be to be determined and to have the drive and gyro teaching, teaching johnny drive. to be a badass to, yeah to, yeah basically to, and, in order to fight for himself and regain his nobility and, and, and it's very interesting because these two characters i mean at first it was all focused on gyro while now these two are both very developed characters mm -hmm. at this point in the story and it, it really makes for a good sort of mm -hmm. way to hold it and i think that i just i just came to this conclusion this is genius right here right Gyro comes from nobility, and he's teaching Johnny to be more noble after his relatively dark past. And Gyro, or Johnny coming from a dark past tells Gyro that he needs to be more be, humble, be darker and sometimes, and, you know, push forward when he needs to. So, that's pretty good analysis right there. You yeah, know? And, and pretty much, yeah. At this point, Gyro's just like, Johnny, what the hell? Yeah. Right, as Johnny goes off and does all things. So, it's really at this point in the race, it's, um... Dio versus Gyro. Uh, also, to note, Dio's horse has the star birthmark that a lot of Joe Stars have on their shoulder, which actually you never see Johnny's throughout the entire series, which is the first time ever we don't see it. Just something to keep in note. And that's the thing that I have not noticed just because mm. I've not known what's yeah. the series, right? And so as they get out of the water, Gyro ditches all of his gear for speed and strips down. Yeah, he like takes off all of his clothes like, I don't even know if he keeps on his hat, yeah. right? But he just, like, strips everything off. I think he does keep on his hat, which is, like, <laughs> how do you get his other clothes off? Yeah, but he, like, unbuttons his jacket, and, like, he throws off all his saddles, like, um, what's his horse's name? Valkyrie? Valkyrie, yeah. He's like, Valkyrie, we've got to win this. We've got, we've got drive, <laughs> right? And then what happens was Gyro takes his steel ball and starts spinning the moisture out of his body. Yeah, Which is just ridiculous. Just to spin, just to ring him out a little bit, so he's faster, and he starts to get ahead on Dio. Because yeah. you gotta remember, like he wrung out like the actual water inside of his body, not just water on him. Yeah. So he's basically a shriveled husk at this point. And Dio, so back in the last chapter, we saw Dio eating gastroliths to help with his digestion. He's come back up. Yeah, he he spits one out, and it hits Gyro's horse. Yeah, like right in the ankle and messes him up, making. And this is right to finish line. You're right at the finish line, yep. But at this point, Johnny comes in and yeah. steals the win. So the ranking that I have here is Johnny, Diego, Gyro, Poco Loco, and Sandman. 
And then we had the other riffraff. Yeah. Everybody else. Yeah. But then we learn yeah. that they are not... This isn't the end. Johnny only gets 50 points because mm. somebody named Hot Pass... Hot Pants. Hot Pants has come in before him. By two hours. Give it... Ahead. And, he is, and he is two hours ahead. And it's just... This was a really cool twist. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just like... This Hot Pants... This Hot Pants... I see. I want to keep say hot past about hot pants. We, we don't even know who this is. Yeah. It just appears all of nowhere. Yeah, and it shows it shows a picture of him, and he's this very feminine looking guy. But um, <laughs> okay. and so uh, that brings us into chapter 33, which uh, cuts a little bit to the true man's world. I say chapter 32 wasn't bad. It was sort of there, and it was. Yeah. It happened. It. Really, I didn't really like all of the Gyro and Johnny stuff. I get sort of had to be put in there, but for me personally, it just wasn't sort of something that I was like, great, let's go. So, time for the true man. I'm going to say it like that every time whenever it comes up. So, the next stage is from Cannon City to Kansas City. Three weeks. Yep. And this chapter really starts off with a bunch of talk about all of these flesh pieces. Yeah. And everything that they know about them. Mm. And they also walk up on a uh, hanging corpse, like a like a uh, piece of a cow. It yeah. says HP on it. And um, Hot Pants comes up to Johnny and Gyro and says straight up that he wants to hang them for eating his cow. Yeah. Just ties up nooses and throws them over the tree. Get in. <laughs> and Johnny and Gyro are just like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And they're basically trying to combat, like, now granted, they did steal some meat off of it. But a lot of the, a lot of the cow was eaten by coyotes, apparently. <laughs> and, and there's also this massive hole just shot straight through it. Yep. And Hot Pants then pulls out a ability. It's like a little lighter kind of thing. A stand. Stand, yeah. We find out it's a stand. And just starts spraying skin on Johnny and Gyro. It's and, very and weird. And it like closes, goes over her face like they don't have eyes anymore. Yeah. It's a very weird visual. And, and they realize that their skin's being taken off from other parts of their body, like covering up their face to suffocate them and blind them. Like it's like their foot or something like that. Yep. Reading this in black and white was a little confusing, but I got the gist, man. Yeah. And while they're fighting, Gyro's able to get up close and take his ball and hit it into Hot Pants' spine and see, like, where there's, like, possible weak points. But he sees on his own spine, mm. right, the words turbo. Yeah, it says turbo. And there's markings in the word turbo. Yep. But they end up dealing with Hot Pants here, and... Yeah, it kind of comes to a standoff. And Johnny shows that it wasn't them because yeah, they, don't, they don't have guns. Yeah, but and he uses his tusk. Yeah. And he, either way, he's like, my nails weren't like that, right? Yep. <laughs> Which has got to be strange coming up to somebody and just starts shooting his nails off. But yeah. anyways. So they're, uh, they find out the location using the binary system in Turbo. Yeah, because we're looking at this Turbo like, all right, is this location... But it's the binary numbering system, which is all zeros and ones. Mm. And when all of it comes together, it's longitude and latitude lines. It turns out to be Kansas City, Missouri. It, it is right. It is right in the area that they were going to. So they and can, of course, this is the end of stage three. Yeah. So they can tell that this route has to do something with these course parts. Yeah. So then Hot Pants and Gyro and Johnny split up, and they go their separate ways. And we get a Chainsaw Man hotel copy. Okay, I I wrote that exactly. I said Eternity Devil, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> because that's what this is. They keep looping on each other, and they make marks on the trees. And it's a bit different than that, but same mm. sort of thing. Uh, Hot Pants is lost as well, and he says that the iron in, maybe in the in the plums around them may be messing with their compass. Yeah, it's very interesting. Which is complete bullshit. <laughs> but then we get the famous scene, Eat shit, asshole, fall off your horse, which is one of the best lines. Yeah, you sent me, like, this fan animation of it last yeah. night. And at this point, I had not read any of this since I had <laughs> forgotten to. Right? And I see it, and I'm like, first off, oh, crap, I got reason. I'm like, this isn't even funny. And when I read the manga, I'm like, this really isn't funny. It, okay. Well, it was there. Anyways, um, Hot Pants is able to bribe Johnny and Gyro to help him out by giving them sandwiches. Yeah. I thought that was pretty good. And so they pretty much all have to work together to... Um, yeah. Find a way out of here. And they keep going by this very isolated house. And this uh, Mexican stereotype guy looking gaucho who... He, he was one of the racers that was focused on last yeah. time. 
He, he makes this note of, I asked the damn dude in his house where to go, and he said, yeah, I had to kill him. He has to kill the man in the house to keep going. And he goes out, he's like, hey, come out and fight me. And this dude just gets fucking obliterated. Yep, we see the door slightly crack open, and it's gay Colonel Sanders. With, did you notice that his goat, goatee's in the shape of a skull? No. <laughs> it is. Jeez. <laughs> and so... He's able to predict Gaucho's moves perfectly. He says, from that distance, you won't be able to kill me. I'll win this fight because of the gun you have and the direction of the wind and all that. And, um, excuse me. They both shoot and he wins the duel. Yeah. This guy's name's Ringo, by the way. It's not revealed yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say that for yeah. ease of use. And we see that Ringo's not even injured, even though he apparently got shot. So, something very interesting. And Gyro's outraged. He's pissed off. He's like, why would you have to kill him? Because Gyro comes from a place where he doesn't want to kill innocent people for no reason. Yeah. From his executioner background. And so let's see, pissed. how many people have Johnny and Gyro killed in this story so far? Gyro has not killed anybody. Really? Johnny's in all of the murder? Johnny has killed everybody, yes. Really? Yep. That's why this arc is important. <laughs> and so they try to leave, and that's where chapter 13 Really? Is. Johnny's in all of the murder? Yeah. Really? Johnny murdered Oma Mava. As far as I'm aware, he did everybody. Huh. <laughs> Putting the nail in their skull. Nail in the coffin. Mm. Whoa, look at that. That's smart right there. That's the entire volume. Yeah. Three chapters. Three chapters. Most important thing was Hot Pants and Eternity Devil. Yep. I, yeah, Chainsaw Man definitely copied this. 100%. Not really. But well, yeah. I guess I guess an infinite room is not a very unique concept. No. We move on to uh, volume eight with one of my favorite covers. And the, have you, do you see the covers whenever you? Read? I I do. I didn't look at them. I love the boy. graffiti cover because it's hot pants like using instead of a instead of cream starter, it's like a spray can. Yes. Anyways, so starting off volume eight, we have chapter thirty four. Yep. My so, I, I like my first note for this is Mr. Badass Ringo. All right. <laughs> Because I really feel like Ringo is the first, like, big badass character we've seen. Yeah. He's pretty threatening. And so, Johnny and Gyro and Hot Pants have lost two hours just walking around trying to get out of here. And they come to the realization, they've got to kill him. they really got no choice. Yeah, and, like, Johnny tries to mark stuff on the trees, mm -hmm. but, like, every time they loop around, it's marked on every single tree in the area. Yeah. And it's very weird thing of, how is this happening? Yeah. And another thing to remember, as you know with how stands work, in order for the stand to go away, you gotta kill the user. So if there is a stand at play here and Ringo's controlling it, they have to kill him. Ringo's gotta die. Yep. So they What's all... Ringo's last name? Road again. Road again. One one word. Ringo Road again. And so they conspire On to the kill road him. again. Yes, we're gonna get copyright bow, struck. Bow, bow. Jane, this video won't even make any money. Number one, I don't have enough subscribers. And you know how many times I've said fuck during this? It's us monetized already. Anyways. They figure out how they're going to kill Ringo. So Hot Pants uses Creepstar to shoot his hand over across and land on the roof. And his, like, stand is over there. So basically, whenever they come out, Hot Pants can shoot him. Yeah. And I'll blind him. And it's this thing where Ringo gets out, and he's like, he does the speech of, well, I'm a, the strongest person I know, and I don't know if I as an equal. Yep. You won't get this, but this is fucking Aizen from Bleach. This is Aizen's entire motif. Just, the, no, I'm the strongest there is. So in order, I will become a god so I can create more gods so I can fight God. Dark. I know, it's great. But Aizen's a cool villain. And Ringo tells Gyro he, he doesn't want to fight him. He only wants to fight the one on the left, which is Johnny. Because he has dark determination. Yeah, Johnny's got this thing that Gyro doesn't have. Cause and then Gyro sort of has this moment where he sort of sees his father around mm. him, and like it's almost sort of like a stand in a way. That, That's yeah, how I saw that, it. That'll come later. And it's like, but it's sort of like around him, like we've seen stands. Yeah, yeah. And his dad is just like, yeah, you amount to nothing. You cannot kill a single soul. Mm. You're a pacifist. What does it say in the volume? He's a conformist. Conformist. Yeah. Yep. And so, Gyro. And his genius spins a ball straight through Ringo's shoulder. But then it comes back. Well, the thing is that he can see, and we can see that Ringo has a thing in his shoulder that if he hits it, he'll be paralyzed. Mm. 
So that's why he does that. Well, no, this is this is before that. This is the first confrontation. He throws it and it comes back. And then it realizes that uh, the ball never hit him. Yeah. It never even touched him. Well, they think it did. Yeah. And Ringo says, this is my stand man. I can rewind time. Rewinds time 10 seconds, 6 seconds. And something interesting to note is that Mandum is actually a fashion brand. It is the first time a stand has ever been named after anything but a song. So something that I know because I've heard of our JoJo parts, it's The World, which is Dio's original stand, which yeah. is Stop Time. And this entire arc is called A True Man's World. Mm. So from my take from that is, yeah, it's based off the world. Yeah. Right. But, um, yeah, The True Man's World kind of has to do with the, the theming of the story and whatnot. And so basically, the other thing to note is that in order to rewind time, Ringo has to spin a little dial on his wristwatch. Watch, yeah. Here's something you have to know, though. Stans do not have to have any physical trigger. He does that to make it fair. He tells him, this is my ability. This is how I'm going to activate it. It's also like a mental sort of confrontation yeah. in a way. Because like in part three, whenever Dio stops time, he always says, the world. He doesn't have to do that. He can just stop time whenever he wants to. So Ringo could rewind time whenever he wants to, but he does not do that to keep it fair. But Ringo can only do it in a six second time burst. Yep. And uh, basically it's revealed that Ringo tells them how they kept going in circles. And basically he rewind time every time they went to go make the correct turn and made a turn early and kept them going in circles. So basically that's how it, that it seems like they would be able to just continuously run forward yeah. and eventually get out. But and so we uh, realize that Ringo wants a fair duel with Johnny. Yeah, he wants a fair duel because that's how shit goes down. Next page, and he says this is the meaning of the true man's world, where basically truth is free and fair, and if everybody can fight on an equal footing, it's good. Yeah, or something. I still don't know what he, what he means by that. I, I don't know what Iraqi means by writing this series. <laughs> We then see that his hand gets cut off with the gun in his hand. Or yes, because... Hot um, Pants shoots a spray and it, like, cuts it off. Yeah, he shoots out the spray and it just cuts his arm, severs it. Yep, and Johnny goes to shoot, but before, Ringo is able to bend down and rewind the watch, which goes to show how the ability works. Yeah. And uh, he shoots Hot Pants, and everybody starts shooting at each other. It's just a big Yeah, blowout. it's a big thing of everybody's trying to win, and... Yeah. And basically... Johnny and Hot Pants both get disabled and get basically nearly crushed Jaru by... Jaru gets shot in the skull. Yeah. yeah, he gets... No, Johnny gets shot in the skull, I think. I said Johnny, right? I thought you said Jaru. No, no, but Johnny, yeah. Jaru, Jaru's the only one left mm. standing after this. And uh, basically, he gets told he's a conformist and to leave. Like, Ringo says you can leave. Yeah, Ringo, Ringo says here. you don't have any worth. You don't even have a corpse part. Mm. Of course, he doesn't know about the eye, so. And what happens is, is Gyro's standing there contemplating what to do. Because six seconds has passed. It's too late to rewind that second, that moment. Yeah. A ball rolls towards him, one of his steel balls. <laughs> and he looks at it, he realizes, you bastard. You rolled that the exact amount that that gun can shoot at a lethal range. And it tells him that Johnny's not dead. Because basically, Ringo shot him just a a tad bit further than what the lethal range would have been, so he's still alive. So it didn't go completely through his brain, it sort of stopped right before. Yeah. So Johnny and Hot Pants, they're both alive. Yeah. Oh, I completely forgot to mention something. Earlier in the chapter when Gyro, or when Johnny is looking at Ringo, you see fire in his eyes. Like you see flames where his eyes are. In whose eyes? In Johnny's. Johnny's? Yeah, because he has that determination. And then after this, when uh, Gyro realizes there's still a chance to save his friends, he has fire at his eyes. Huh, which is, interesting. Which is I his, didn't notice that whatsoever. It's his um, way of saying that he has the dark motivation now. Yeah. And that's where chapter 34 ends. Yeah, it's a bunch of, like, action logic shit at the end of it. Mm. Right? It's sort of just like, it's all there. It's ready to happen. Let's it's go for setting it. Setting up the duel. Yep. Chapter 35. We start off with Ringo backstory. Yep. Which is weird <clears throat> because it's like Ringo and his family were alive. If Ringo got touched, he would like bleed. Yeah, he had very frail skin. And yeah, and then like all of a sudden, for somehow his like most of his family dies mm. and like stuff happens and eventually a guy comes in. Who's I'm pretty sure it's his father. 
Is that who comes in? Because his father was in the Civil War and was a traitor, but came back, I think. Oh. And, and so he tries to uh, make moves on Ringo. Yeah, he... Which, to be honest, Jesus, Rocky have, like, something that he likes to do, like, with rape and shit like that. Ooh, it's just like it, it's happened so much. It has it has even got that bad. It, it's gotten in the backstories of almost every character so far. There is a scene later on in Steel Ball Run. Uh, I know, I know what it is. Well, since I've gotten, it. but it's just like uh, it's just very uncomfortable. I, I've noticed that as well. It's just like why.
Gyro makes the final hit and kills Ringo. Yeah. Which I guess this is where Gyro kills somebody. This is, this is the first Gyro, uh, yeah, kills somebody. So, this is really all we have for Ringo. So, I'm mm. going to talk about it now. Um, this arc seems to set up Hot Pants. Mm. It seems to set up Gyro's determination. And it sets up this time rollback power. Yeah. To be honest, it was fine. Very confusing towards the end. Yeah. I, I didn't. To be honest, I really like scary monsters like forty times more than I like this. A lot of people claim that this is the best arc of Steel Ball Run. This and is I good. This highly is, disagree. This is a good character development. Besides for that, scary monsters was better. I agree. I think this was scary monsters was the better fight. This was the better story development. Scary Monsters, yeah, had a very good fight and good um, sort of motifs of, all right, we've got to work together to get this course mm. part, right? And more of a fun battle. While this was sort of more of a determination and character building, that's not bad. I like both of those things. But but I, I agree. It, the, it wasn't the best. The final duel was confusing. And everybody who says that this is a 10 out of 10 arc, they're wrong. I'd give it, I'd give it like a seven or an eight. Yeah. It was still good, but yeah. Yeah, this was good. It just wasn't great. All right. We find out that there is a 20 day time skip and they're a day away from Can uh, Kansas. Yep. Um, but for this time rewind. Yep. Um, <laughs> it goes back to like after the fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 36. Yeah. So HP hot pants is the dedicated healer. So basically I, I say that, but it's because his stand can heal people. He's able yeah. to patch up wounds with it. Yeah, yeah, because Gyro goes and patches up Johnny's face with it. Mm. And he also heals himself along with Hot Pants. Yep. And after this, after they get up in this very serious fight, you have this nice tonal change. Hey, Johnny, I just thought of this new gag. And so I want to explain this real quick. This is a Japanese joke. You're not going to understand this in English. Because I didn't. I read this and just went. And I read it a few times and I just didn't get it. So I'm like, okay, fine. Okay. So Gyro says, excuse me, please let me pass while doing the signs for four, two, and zero. And in Japanese, you can interpret these uh, these numbers in many different ways. So four can be shi, two can be tsu, which is how Engli like how they say tsu in English, and zero is re, shitsude, which means excuse me. So he says shitsude, let me pass, whatnot. Which is funny, it's just, that needs an editor note, because yeah, and, it doesn't make sense otherwise. And, and the funny thing is, I think the reason they left it out is because it's a bad joke, even in Japanese. It's really trash. And you can tell Johnny's being very sarcastic, saying it's, a, it's good. Oh, yeah. that was really good, Jar. Let me, let me write that one down. <laughs> and, Jai, and it seems like Jar is like actually very proud of this joke. Yeah, which is not, that is the, alright, you know how in the, <laughs> in Nisekoi, we had the running gag of ridiculous chapter with Sugumi and yes. magical item. There's going to be a running gag with Gyro making stupid jokes and Johnny thinking they're funny. Gyro and shitty jokes. Gyro shitty jokes. <laughs> hey, Lord Body, welcome back to this episode of Gyro Shitty Jokes. Today, the joke is Shitsure. That will be that will be a very common <laughs> recurring theme. So, both Gyro and Johnny are like, hey, this fight actually helped us a lot. I feel very emboldened. We should yeah. keep going. And Gyro has his determination now. I think Johnny makes a note on that, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah, he, no he, he can note that Gyro... He, he feels different. And I look over to Hot Pants, and I've made multiple mistakes throughout this video, but we finally... Yeah, yeah, revealed. yes, I have edited him out. We finally revealed boobs. Hot Pants is, is, is a girl? Hot Pants is a woman. And the reason that they didn't realize this earlier was there is a translation note. Uh, in Japanese, Hot Pants uses very masculine pronouns to refer to herself, and so people just thought she was a dude. So, yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I read this and I went, <laughs> well, of course it would be. Yeah. Right. And they just ditch her. They just leave her there. <laughs> yeah, they, just, <laughs> they just leave her there. She should be alive, being that she got repaired yeah, and all. Yeah, she's alive. But, all right. And then Gyro and Johnny go on their own. Yep, and we finally cut back to uh, modern time. And, and Gyro and Johnny have this sort of thing of where, okay, so we're in the last leg of the race, mm -hmm. right? Gotta go around. Um, they see Poco Loco and Sandman running by, right? Yeah. And the, and pretty much um, Gyro stops Sandman, and Sandman sort of pays back his thing of like, hey, I won the first stage, you didn't mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Right, there's something there for that. And But pretty much you're asking about Dio, because they need to get where Dio is because they need to stop Dio from getting the next quarter. Yeah, because they realize at this point 
uh, Dio has most likely solved the puzzle by now. Yeah. And because here's what happened. Same man told him he was taking the route with no water nearby, which means he was going directly to the corpse part. Yeah. And just just pull what happens here in a second. Um, we learned that this corpse part is the spine, yep. which is very important. And Gyro and Johnny are like, well, fuck, we have to get this corpse mm. part. If we don't, I mean, we're even more behind from Dio, and Dio's yeah. already a few days of head thanks to that um, fight with um, Ringo. Yeah, so we find out that, uh, that Steel is working with the government, obviously, we know this, and that there's going to be a storm the next day. Yeah, and um, Sandman mentions this. Yep. Uh, and we also, Valentine is with them, and he says... Oh, well, yeah, 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 what's the say? Now we move over to where Steven's stealing, like, Valentine yeah, yeah. and attendance. And we don't see Gyro, Johnny, and any of them for us yeah, a this chapter. Is, this is back over to them. And it's come to the conclusion that um, Gyro and Johnny are going to go to the um, to find Diego. Yep. And Ringo was supposed to send a messenger bird, but it hasn't arrived yet about what happened to them. Yeah. And so that hasn't... And, and, jo- and Johnny actually makes a note of while we're talking about this um, bird... Or a bird cage. It didn't have a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was mentioned earlier. And Valentine says that Steel may betray them, but then he also thinks himself that he might have no reason to. Because, because, because we know that while Steel is in this race for the corpse parts and what, yeah. he does have that dream of this being a true race of yeah. American Steven, spirit. Steven Steel wants to do this for the race, whereas Valentine's doing it for a more sinister reason. Yeah, and Valentine and. From what I've taken it, Valentine sponsored this event, and he mm. made the route. Yeah. and But Steven Seal just wants to see this great and, race happen. And, and he's the face of it, basically. Yeah. He wants to see the Americans' dream live on. Yep. And we find out that during this time, it is raining. And also, we see that Lucy Steele is learning how to read lips. Yeah, and she's listening to everything that Valentine and all of them are saying. Yeah. Being that um, we learned last set of chapters that... She saw the heart. Mm. And she is also very scared for her husband's life. Yeah. And it's at this point that I realize Lucy and Steven Steele kind of have, have like a father-daughter relationship. And the marriage is more of just a legal thing. Yeah. Because I really do think that Steven Steele's like a father figure to her, being that he's like, who knows how old, and she's 14. So. Yeah. It, it does sort of get explained that she's like, oh, no, I, I love him. I don't want him to die Yeah. while calling me a husband and everything. But it, I do sort of do, do see what you're saying. But, yeah. And she also sees that she hears about this pigeon that's arriving. And she actually sees it with a little message can wrapped to its leg. She's like, oh, shit, I got to go. I got to go intercept that. That's because if I don't, Steven may die. Yeah. And so she distracts the guard by uh, saying that she needs to bring lunch to her husband. And goes up to the top floor and grabs the message. And breaks in. Yep. And at this point, Valentine. Valentine approaches. And what's this guy's name? Blackmore? Blackmore, yep. And he comes with. Yeah. And they notice inconsistencies, such as there's an extra bird in there, and it should have arrived by now. And, and there's just, footprints around. Yeah. And a bunch. it was a really suspenseful thing, and it's pretty much all led up to be, oh, the bird's here, but Lucy ends up having the message. And it's she, it's and a she, very tense moment. And she hides well enough to where she's not getting caught, but she barely gets caught, but she doesn't. Yeah, well, what happens is she barely gets, before she gets caught, the bird flies out real quickly, which yeah. shows that the bird's probably relatively intelligent or just pure coincidence. Uh, what well, I, I, well, I figured is that Lucy let go of the bird to yeah. actually divert that attention that's true and as it flew up it, they looked up and got distracted by what was down there like oh that's the one yeah and then blackmore uses this like ability to walk on yep. rain <laughs> valentine's like blackmore go get that and blackmore's like okay sir puts on this like weird rainbow mask which kind of looks like uh shit, there's a character from dc but i'm forgetting what his name is looks very deathstroke looks like deathstroke and they go and he just walks on rain and yeah he, he kind of has the ability to dissolve himself this was very interesting. I'm going to be honest with you. This last chapter didn't really do a whole lot for me. Yeah. I think the funniest part of it is, Hot Pants is a, is, this is a girl? Yeah. And so he dissolves himself and is able to grab the bird kind of like with his teeth. It's a very strange ability that will get explained later, I'm pretty sure. And he brings it back. And I'm like, oh shit, the message has been intercepted. And then there's this whole thing of, there's an intruder in the building. As we like see Lucy rocking around and we cut yeah. Steven Seal at the end who's just there. So it's there's some traitor around and that's going to cause a lot of conflict. Yeah. But that's where uh, this volume ends. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I think the peak parts of these chapters are the first two. 31 and 32. Yeah. Just because they sort of have a moment. Then we have the True Man's World stuff. And then we have this final chapter. Mm. Which is fine. It's just... 
I want to get more to the globe trotting corpse part stuff with Johnny Gyro and them chasing Diego. Yeah. That's what I want to see right now. All right. Not that these are bad. I'd probably give them a solid seven. Okay. I mean, it wasn't my as favorite as what we had last time, but it was good. I'd I'd give these an eight. And again, my scale is more harsh than you, so an eight's pretty high up. So but also, you do like this series. I I do love this series. Yeah. And coming back from uh, rereading it, basically. Uh, this does do a lot for Johnny and Gyro's characters. Because you got to remember, in the first two volumes, these guys nearly hated each other. Yeah. And they're already very close to each other at this point. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's good. And it's just... I I, li- I just like scary monsters more. Yep. So, do you, have a, do you have a title for this episode? Gay Colonel Sanders, possibly? No, I we said something earlier. I'll figure it out. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for us. Yeah. Maybe we can do Dio named Dio. No. I'll come back. Uh, what I say earlier about like um, nail in the coffin, misgendering hot pants. Uh, 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 uh. Hot pants, this is a girl. Well, B- boobies. That's what one name. <laughs> that's only getting it taken down. Okay. So with that, um, I don't really have anything else to say about this. Next time we'll be back with um, nine and ten, which will be some more chapters. Of obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and with that, do you have anything else you want to say, Jaden? Oh uh, no, that'll do it for me. Yeah, so this was JoJo's Steel Ball Run, um, part seven, episode four of this series, volumes seven and eight, and chapters 31 and 36. All right. With that, this is Gold Plasma 231 out. See ya.